Hi guys, uh, welcome back to another video on the NZ Day Trading 101 channel. I'm Shami and today I'm just going to talk about like uh, something that's quite important um, and that's just basically staying connected with the market. So for you new traders out there, like it's really important that we're not trading all the time and um, if you're especially starting out just to save you guys, you know, lots of losses and stuff, it's probably just better to keep a just an eye on a lot of stocks that are, you know, pumping up in a and NZ and um, also just keep an eye on the overall sort of market so a good way to start out is just kind of like um, keep a watch list of like um, you know the companies on the NZX and just kind of on a daily basis just have a look like uh, which ones are going up which ones aren't going down or just kind of like um, just have a look at like how stocks are behaving so you know you have your New Zealand you have your like uh, Somerset and AFT and stuff like that um, just have a look at some of these stocks keep them on like uh, everyone's probably got a smartphone these days I mean like a smart having a smartphone is probably the most important thing because like um you know it's easy to like create a watch list on Yahoo or TradingView or even like direct broking whatever you want and just kind of like a it'll show you like tickers that are going up and tickers that are going down and just like the some of the percentage you know the high percentage gains of the day the ones that had the losses and also just keep an eye on the charts as well so the idea is basically if you're starting out you just want to stay really connected to the market as in just like keep your eye on everything every single stock that's going up and down just try and keep your eye over the whole sort of overall market because like um unlike the us uh new zealand doesn't have like you know friggin thousands of you know companies and stuff we only have like a very few companies so if you just look at um you know if you just go into uh right, let's see if you just go into the nzx site Put an NZX here. So if you want to know, like, a, I don't know, if you guys wanted to create something fancy with spreadsheets and stuff, then something you guys can do is just like, um, where is it? NZX main board. There you go. So these are basically, um, so yeah, so we've got 178 sort of, um, you know, companies and Either that includes the ETS and stuff that you can kind of invest in. So a good thing you guys can do is just go through and um, you know you can always just like if you want to put into a spreadsheet, you just kind of copy paste that and you can spread paste it into a spreadsheet and just kind of look at what the tradable sort of stocks are. So what are like you know the real companies. So ignoring all the ETFs and all that sort of stuff and the smart shares, um, and just keep an eye on it. Like a you know for me personally, I just use TradingView because I feel TradingView is quite an easy way to kind of keep a keep an eye on stocks so I kind of have my own sort of watch list down here of you know tradable stock so but this one is just a hot list like you can create your own like yeah watch list and stuff um yeah so the uh yeah so going back to like a you know like um keeping your eye on the stocks so basically um you know yeah I'll just rip out my phone anyways and I'll show you guys on my phone so So for me, I just have like a, you know, all my stocks over here. I just got like this, you know, all these sort of stocks I'm watching. And it kind of shows me like, um, you know, all the sort of uh, the like, you know, stocks are going on. So I look at this probably almost, you know, once every hour per day. And the simple reason for that is that I can kind of just see what different stocks are doing and just kind of play around with the charts and, just kind of see like um is stocks holding at support levels and are they like uh selling off at resistance levels kind of thing so just looking at these charts all day is going to help you to kind of gain like a a better picture of like um you know how stocks are behaving basically so again like trading is a hard thing you know it's not easy and you can't just go willy-nilly into it and just start putting money into it straight away because what will happen is you'll just end up and you know you'll just end up making losses at the start so because most new traders what they'll do is they'll go through this sort of um you know I'll just draw something like a trader sort of account how a day trader sort of account goes or swing trader sort of account goes at the start and let's say this is a graph and here's the time sort of thing so let's draw out a little time uh, So it's quite hard to type on this, but anyways, so that's your time down the bottom right here, 
And then this is your sort of a, your gains. So I'm just going to write a G here. So basically over time, your gains are going to, at the start, you'll probably go, yep, all right, cool, I'm doing well. You know, you'll go up like this. Then all of a sudden, you just see a sudden dip. You'll make a big loss and you'll go probably past what you invested in. And this is where, like, uh, you know, this is where traders are made because then they realize that trading is not, you know, as easy as everyone, you know, thinks it is. Then they'll start to learn and you think, all right, this is hard. But the people that don't give up in this sort of area here are the ones that will make it as a trader because eventually, um, you know, your trading profits will start to go up like this and they'll go up gradually and slowly. And so it'll kind of go like this. And as you get more and more experience, you'll start to, you know, create, get a bigger um, trading account and you start to make some more gains that will surpass your gains at the start. And then, again, all this takes time. So basically, you know, if you're making, you know, fast gains quickly, it means that it's probably not sustainable and you've just probably had like really good luck at the start. So it's important that, um, you know, you're able to make gains like, um, you know, and Marketing conditions that are going down, and market conditions going up, and you know, uh, marketing conditions that are kind of not going up or down, they're staying in the same place. So, and a good way to kind of, um, you know, learn is just to create like an Excel spreadsheet or something and just see what works in the market. Like, if you're trading, uh, like, if you're like, you know, if you if you like to trade just a few stocks, like, let's say, like Kathmandu or something, they just, um, just keep an eye on it, like. At the moment, as you can see with Kathmandu, um, so if you're, yeah, so let's say you want to keep an eye on Kathmandu, and then, um, and just have a look, like, okay, so what's your play? What are you guys planning? Like, okay, you want to go for, like, a, a double bottom play? So let's say your strategy is, whoops. So I've got a new laptop, by the way, guys. So I haven't got like the usual mouse and stuff. That's why I'm sitting on the couch. And um, my other laptop was just like was too big, and it was just like I couldn't like take it with me places. Uh, so I decided to get a new one. So I'm just trying to, you know, figure the laptop out because I'm used to using a mouse, not a touchpad thingy. So uh, far out. All right, hang on. Anyways, uh, all right, so if you guys are, you know, if you guys are like, all right, my strategy is to, oh, stuff it, um, this mouse is acting all haywire, but if your strategy is to kind of buy at these bottoms, like let's say, all right, here's a double bottom, so, you know, it's bottomed out here, at 106 um, and it's gone up and it's going to bottom and you think it's going to bottom out again and it's holding at um, uh, it's holding at you know 110 106 or again like like 108 let's say um, you know the, uh, the stock obviously went down but it's held above 106 and now it's dropped near 106 107 again if you want to go if you if your strategy is to do like a double bottom sort of play and then just write it, just have a look, you don't have to trade it, just have a look, like, um, you know, does the stock, like this double bottom play, um, how often does it work? Like, let's say you've done it like 10 times now, or like 20 times, 30 times, and you're just writing your results down like a Excel spreadsheet, and you're just kind of like, um, you're just seeing how many times a double bottom play has worked, and how many times it hasn't worked. If it has a high probability of a success, and you can manage your risks, let's say like if it holds in, you can put your stop, about 105 and it goes to like 120 or something like that and then if that sort of works for you then write it down and then you kind of know all right i've now i found myself a strategy and it's a profitable strategy. this is the only thing i'm doing in the market because this strategy works for me meaning that all right every time i see this on the charts i'm gonna buy here i'm gonna sell here if i have to cut my losses and my target price is obviously going to be like you know two free two or three to one risk reward ratio so this is probably the best thing because if you write down, you got to treat your trading like a business. Like you don't want to be gambling in shares. You don't want to be just shoving your money in and out kind of thing. You want to just kind of have like a plan right now. All right. Like obviously like, um, you know, if, if you're trading up here, like, all right, I'm buying here because it's going up. 
So the people that bought at, you know, 145 or whatever, they're probably down for ages now. They've probably been down for like, a, you know, a couple of weeks. They bought at 143 and it's down to one level. So they're probably down about, um, you know, probably down about you know, 22%. So it's like, what was your plan behind it? Did you think it was going to keep going up? And if you thought the stock was going to keep going up, then I give up on the drawing tool, by the way. Um, yeah, so if you thought, you know, the stock was going to keep going out, then if you bought here, they cut your losses quick if you think it's, if it goes below like 137 or 140 or something, and you bought it and, it and the trade didn't go right, then just cut your losses. You'll cut a small loss. And what that saves you, if you cut your losses at 140, then obviously like um, when you get back to 120, and you, you can probably just buy again if you wanted to, if that's part of your strategy, manage your risk again. So especially with me, like I've started to use, I used to use market depth quite a bit, but now I've also um, started to use charts along with my market depth. Just, uh, for me, it just helps to get me a better picture of how I want my trade to play out. And it's all about, you should already know what your trade's going to do. Like, you don't just invest in a stock, oh, sorry, you don't just trade a stock, like, hoping that it'll go to this point and hoping that it won't go down. It's more like you should plan the trade as, an, all right, I'm in here, if it goes down here, I'm going to cut my losses, and then if hits my target price up here, I'm going to get out regardless if it keeps going higher. But I've said to myself, I'm going to get out here. And if if it does hit your target price, the thing is you just got to like, um, you can't cut your, you know, if you see no reason to sell, then don't sell and just adjust your stop to a higher level. So if you see like a, let's say you bought a, um, let's say you bought a, a dollar, I don't know what's this, a dollar, you know, dollar ten cents or something, and you put your stop at a dollar one cent, then you wanted to go a dollar thirty, then let it play out. Because um because you know that's just if you're swing trading though. So there's different styles as well. So if you're swing trading you bought it a dollar I said dollar ten and your stop loss is like a dollar. Alright, that's ten cents stops. Just wait it to go to dollar thirty. But if it does hit dollar thirty and it continues to go higher, there's no reason for you to get out of the stock. Then what you'll do is you move your stop and this is what they call like a trailing stop. So basically you just trail your your stop high along with your um, position. If your position is going up, you trail your stock. And then as soon as it goes down, you just, you know, you would like a, you would just basically sell up and take your gains. So obviously like um, these things come with experience and, you know, there's plenty of information on Google and stuff. Um, but uh, this is kind of a good thing to do with stocks. Just kind of like keep, keep your eyes on like a, you know, if you go to your hodlers, like if, if you guys that are on like trading view and stuff, like there's so many stocks you can kind of look at on the hot list. Like for me personally, I don't trade often. I just I see good setups and I trade them. I mean, it's as simple as that. If something looks good to me and I can manage my risk, and I also know that you know there's a high probability I can probably make at least a two to one sort of um uh two to one sort of a, a reward to risk ratio kind of thing, and then um yeah, then I'm definitely going for it. So. It's about being in the middle of being like, don't be too scared to trade, but don't be too greedy either. So don't be too scared, don't be too greedy, you want to be in the middle. And the only the only way to do that is by being calculated. It's just like, um, I don't know, it's just like MMA fighting, for example, you know, like you can't just be like, you know, throwing punches and stuff, you know, like, what, you know, crazy punches, you know, expecting to get that one knockout punch kind of thing. That's kind of gambling. But, you know, the best MMA fighters, they're like calculated, you know, like like they kind of, you know, throw the combos and stuff and they're kind of waiting to, you know, waiting for the right setup to, you know, throw the jab and stuff. So that's the same thing with trading. You just got to, you know, you got to look for the, the right sort of setup. You got to, you know, manage your risk. Um, you know, what happens if the stock goes the other way? Do I cut my losses? So, you know, it's just like fighting and stuff. You know how people like, you know, they throw a jab and then they miss their jab and they make sure that they're like kind of like, um, you know, ready to dodge an incoming punch or something like that. So that's just an example just off the top of my head. So, yeah. So, yeah, it's like a hot list is a good way to do that. Um, and that's what I do. I just basically just keep an eye on what the, the overall sort of, um, you know, what 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 are stocks doing, you know? Like, there's not thousands and thousands of stocks in the NZ market. Like, um, if you go back to the NZ exchange, there's only about 178 instruments. So it'll probably be like, um, I don't know, there'll be, you know, companies, you know, going to scout you just got to kind of look for which ones are going up and just make sure that they are like proper companies you can trade um 
Yeah. So the hotness are really good for that. I mean, look, stocks everywhere. You know? Look at that. Like Somerset right now. It's retirement villages. You know, it's going for sort of a, you know, it could just curve higher. So my drawing tool works higher this time. You know, it can kind of just continue to go higher along with the market. So because it's sort of on the upward sort of rise. So something like Somerset, for example, if the just going to look at the NZX. So the overall market is sort of going up. So as you can see here, looking at the overall market, I think the last video I talked about, I think last Sunday, we weren't sure whether the market was, you know, going down or going up. And right now, to me, it looks like it's going up. As long as it doesn't form a double top and it continues that momentum higher. Uh, but to me personally, I feel like the market is going up. So if we go back to, uh, you know, if the market's going higher here, then you know that, you know, other stocks are probably likely to follow it higher too. So, yeah, like some of, going back to Somerset, you know, that's looking like it's probably going to continue higher, uh, slowly but surely. You know, all these uh, all these stocks sort of had a bump higher. So, and you want to trade orderly price action as well. Look at this. This is going for like a, you know, two-day reversal. Volume is coming in. This could continue higher as well. As long as you manage your risk, it's okay. But I personally want to trade these things because I'm looking for that sort of A-plus sort of setups. So, me personally, I like to trade less and trade more quality. So. Um, and also trade liquid stocks because I like to stick a little bit of you know size behind it, you know, making some good gains and stuff. Um, yeah, Z Energy. Um, this is something I probably wouldn't trade personally. Oops. And the reason for that, to me, it just looks like it's going for like a a flat top breakdown kind of thing. So as you can see, it's made a high high, made a higher sort of um sorry, a high high. And there's a, like a lower high, and it's kind of just like broken below that sort of support and could trend. I don't know. Now, that's just my sort of, you know, I could be wrong, but um, yeah. Another thing is like to trade these higher price stocks like main freight and stuff. These are some choppy stocks. So, you know, you got your your main freight, you got your like, um, what's the other one? Uh, you know, A2 milk. The amount of times I've got burned by AQ milk, A2 milk, far out. You know, it's definitely trending in a higher direction, but it's probably not a good trading stock, like a day trading stock. Because um, you know, it's got some choppy price action in there, and it's kind of hard to read it in the market depth as well. So, um, yeah. So anyway, movers of this week. Obviously, we saw this was a good mover. Um, Fisher Paykel Holdings. So you know, sort of was it stuck in that range down over here? If I can create. Nope. My mouse is still acting a bit choppy and stuff. So I'm not going to draw a trend line. I'll just, uh, you guys will probably know. But you see here, so between like about, you know, 31, you know, it's formed sort of one, two, three, four, and it's formed like a bottom as well. Between 31 and 27, it was just trading this little sort of range. But finally, after the earnings announcement, um, I know a lot of you traders that are, called, you know, keep an eye on the market. And you probably saw, you know, you saw your earnings break over here and you saw this broken out. So a lot of traders, you know, I'm pretty sure people in New Zealand love to kind of just like, you know, put their money in before the before the kind of the earnings now sort of happens. I don't know if they're trying to gamble on it. I mean, most of the time if a stock's trending higher and does have an earnings break, it'll probably go higher anyways. I mean, if that's your strategy, then great, you know, go for it. So but this was an earnings runner basically. So anyone that got in on day two of the runner, um, so anyone that got in day two, yeah, let's move this. So here we go. So the earnings breakout came there. Yep. So here was your earnings breakout, broke out. You know, the stock finished on a high. So the stock finished higher at the end of the day. Um, and usually when the stock finishes at the higher on at the end of the day, then it's likely to continue higher. And so people that got in on day three of the breakout, um, which is over here, and it finished higher. Uh, it looked like it was going to continue to move higher, probably for a couple more days, but um, it didn't here, so it's kind of the you know end of the trend kind of thing. But uh, not really, because as you can see here, if the people that would have got on there would have put their stop down at the the bottom of the previous day, and so people that are probably in here are probably still in the stock because this stock is probably um, probably likely to move higher. But if it does break that sort of low, um, it's also making sort of um, you know, higher lows from the previous day. So the momentum is in the upside, but you don't really know because, you know, stocks can fall and, you know, go up any, any you know, any time. So because that's the thing with like trading and stocks and stuff. Remember, there's like a 90% to 95% like, a, you know, 
um, traders, they don't make it, you know, they don't make it long term. Like, I've been doing this for like, how many, five years, five, six years, something like that. And look, I'm still here. So, and the reason why I'm still here is just like passion, grit, determination, you know. It's like, shit, I don't want to work like nine to five forever. So, um, you know, I'm trying to make this thing. So, at the same time, running my business. So, you know, it's all about just finding time. So, for me, I value like time over money. Um, I think time is the most important commodity in the world because time is something you can never get back. So, it's important that we aren't wasting time and, you know, want to make sure that we keep moving forward and stuff. So, yeah. Alrighty, um, that's my little spiel for today, Sunday nights, you know how it is, um, if you have any questions, just pop in in the comment section below, um, you know, I always like recording these videos, you know, it helps me wind down on Sunday night, talking about the market and stuff, and um, yeah, so, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and, you know, check out my Instagram, I don't post much on there, probably want to find more time, and I'll see you guys for the next video.